tell you about our first speaker back on the main stage. Her name is Tara Resvani, and she is going to be talking to us about building a new era of aviation. So we know the future of aviation is here, but it might be much smaller than it was before. More widespread and more numerous than you could have ever imagined. You might know what I'm talking about. We got a little glimpse of it yesterday. Let me add her to our stage here, Tara. Hello and welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. We are so happy to have you. As I was just alluding to, we got a, a small glimpse yesterday of some stuff that Wing was doing. And I want everyone here to meet Tara. She's a software engineering manager leading the teams that are focused on building UTM, so uncrewed traffic management systems for Wing. And she's gonna tell us all about where tech meets aviation and building this new industry. Tara, I'm so excited to hand it over to you. Thank you, thanks Margo. Hi everyone, I am Tara Rizvani and I am the UTM engineering lead at Wing. I'm so excited to be presenting at the Women in Tech Global Conference this year and share with you all about how we're building for a new and exciting era of aviation. Wing is Alphabet's autonomous aviation company, which provides commercial drone delivery services. Drone delivery is faster, safer, and more sustainable when compared to other more traditionally, traditional delivery methods. Our all-electric aircraft emits zero pollution as it flies above roadways and ground traffic. A fun fact that I like to share is that our quickest time from one of our users submitting an order to the time that we delivered it to their backyard is just under three minutes. That's fast enough where your gelato is still frozen and your coffee is still piping hot. As an operator, Wing has completed over 200,000 commercial deliveries across Australia, Virginia, Texas, and Finland. Safety is our top priority as a company in everything that we build at Wing. Our aircraft has purposeful redundancies, such as additional motors, batteries, and even multiple navigation systems. Onboard software helps the aircraft process information in flight and monitor its own health and performance while in the air. We have learned a lot about how to collaborate with others across the industry to build systems that will enable us and others to share safely this sky, one of our biggest resources, and enter a new and modern era of aviation. Drone delivery is no longer science fiction, and we are seeing a new era of aviation emerging that supports not only drone delivery, but many other small uncrewed aircraft applications as well in the big blue shared sky. When we think about aviation, it traditionally began with crewed aircraft in the sky. Crewed aircraft are aircraft with people on it or crew. Now that we're seeing drones and other types of uncrewed aircraft or aircraft without drones, we're seeing them take flight at an increasing number of vehicles in the sky at one time and with a diversity of use cases. So with more untraditional, I will say air quotes, untraditional aircraft in the sky and at much higher volumes, the needs of modern aviation are changing and changing very quickly. The current air traffic management systems depend on air traffic control towers, paper charts, and manual processes. This system can manage around like thousands of crewed, air, uh, crewed flights at a time all around the world. But what happens when we need a system that is capable of managing millions of flights, including crewed aircraft, drone flights, and other use cases, doing a variety of things, not only transporting people from point A to point B, but delivering medicine or even hobbyists flying their drones or photographers taking pictures. With the current human-centric paradigm that has been traditionally used, it will be very difficult to scale to this volume. The air traffic management system wasn't designed with drones in mind and simply cannot scale as is. There will be more aircraft flying in more places on demand with more unique form factors and types of missions than we have ever seen before. And this is really an exciting thing. To share, here is some data around the current and forecasted drone market growth. The number of registered drones has been growing and will continue to grow sustainably. 
we can see here from 2019, we have a market of about $19 billion. And we forecast that growth to be almost twice that, more than twice that actually in 2024 at around $45.8 billion. This is a lot of growth in a short period of time. So how do we support this new era of aviation? We can't toss out the current solution. Otherwise flights won't take off until a solution is in place, nor is it practical to build a whole new system to replace the current one. Safely integrating drones in our airspace will depend on new frameworks and technology that work alongside current air traffic management systems. What we aim to do is build a system that operates side by side with current traditional aviation processes and tools. These systems will work in harmony with traditional aviation, complementing existing frameworks so that all types of aircraft, both crewed and uncrewed, are able to safely coexist. We call this new system UTM, short for Uncrewed Traffic Management. So over the past 100 years, we saw huge growth in another industry, ground vehicles. And I think there's a lot of parallels and things that we learned from watching that experience on that scale. So in the year 1900, there were 8,000 registered cars in the US. And just 30 years later, there were over 23 million registered vehicles on the road. This is incredible growth in a very short period of time. And not only has the volume of cars on the road, was it increasing rapidly, but it has continued to grow and increase. And today we see more than 10 times that many cars on the road in a number of shapes, sizes, levels of autonomy, and with functionality that didn't exist in the early 1900s. Society and regulators knew that the methods used to manage roadways in the year 1900 could not scale to support the growth that they were seeing at the time. So they evolved the systems for managing this ground traffic, introducing concepts like traffic laws, highway systems, a common language between drivers such as blinkers or stop signs, identifiers such as license plates, and very importantly, safety standards such as enforcing wearing seatbelts. So after 100, about you know, 100 years of evolving this ground traffic management system, the result is a relatively harmonized system that is built on three foundational pillars, standards, interoperability, and automation. And these three core principles apply not only to ground traffic management, but aerial traffic management as well. We've applied these principles when developing an approach towards uncrewed air traffic management. So let's break this down a little bit and begin with the standards. So we need to build a foundation of common understanding that is widely known, shared, and adhered to. In ground traffic, these are universal notions such as red means stop, green means go, or we all agree to drive on a specific side of the road. In aviation, we look to the aviation authorities, for example, the FAA, to establish rules to bring these standards to life and approve solutions that meet these standards. A common language between vehicles is important as well to promote an interoperable environment. On the ground, we have signals such as blinkers, brake lights, um, and other methods to communicate directional intent from one driver or vehicle to another. And in the airspace, we need a similar common language to share the intent of our flights to detect conflict and promote fairness. And while this doesn't directly manifest into a, a literal drum blinker, we have software systems for planning and sharing operational intent. And lastly, we have automation, which is a fundamental piece towards achieving a scalable future in the sky. Examples of this on the ground are things like automatically changing traffic lights or automatic toll booths. UTM has an opportunity to lead with automation to advance the industry by enhancing safety and improving managing flight volumes at a large scale. The drone industry has demonstrated how regulators can partner with industry to develop technology and execute real world operations in multiple countries to accelerate the development of UTM. 
Industry service suppliers are integrating with the safety standards to create an innovative environment for the aviation industry while enabling regulatory oversight. This allows the drone industry to build tools for all types of pilots. The same way that there are tools to support different cars and driving purposes, a similar paradigm maps to UTM as well. So let's break down this diagram a bit. On the left here, we have the aviation authority. So these are folks like the FAA and the US, COSTA in Australia and various other authorities around the world. In the middle, we have UAS service suppliers, which I'll dive into a little bit. And on the right, we have the drone operators. So these are people operating drones. And so this is a very high level overview of how a decentralized approach to this works. In the system, there's a network of UAS service suppliers. And UAS stands for Uncrewed Aerial Systems, which for simplicity of this talk, you can think of as a drone, for example. So drone service suppliers. These UAS service suppliers can help drone operators find safe areas to fly, request and receive authorization to fly in controlled airspace, detect conflicts with other flights, and identify themselves to observers on the ground. Over time, UAS service suppliers can develop other services for particular drone operations. So to safely share the airspace, these UAS service suppliers will need to be interoperable to share information as needed to help, for example, a drone operator plan a flight to avoid other aircraft. Wing and industry working together with regulators has demonstrated that UAS service suppliers can communicate this information through open protocols based on global standards. And this ecosystem is subject to rigorous oversight by the airspace authorities over on the left, who set the rules and standards for the UAS service suppliers and the drone operators. The airspace authorities ensure UAS service suppliers meet performance requirements they identify authoritative data sources so that the information is correct and consistent. And they also publish airspace restrictions and notifications that the UAS service suppliers will communicate directly to the drone operators using their tools. These tools allow drone operators to have access to accurate information for their operations. And this UTM ecosystem as a whole can adapt to the needs of operators today, but also has built in flexibility to adapt and adjust to the needs of operators tomorrow and in the future, as we continue to see aviation evolving. So Wing, for example, has developed a UAS service called Open Sky. One of the tools that Wing has built for our own commercial flights is our Open Sky software. We're able to safely deliver goods to consumers in record time with automatic route planning and flight monitoring. Some of the open sky services are also available to the broader recreation and commercial drone pilot community through our iOS and Android apps. So anyone in the US and Australia is able to download these applications and see and learn more about the airspace around them. The open sky app has been designed to provide simple, clear indicators for hobbyist pilots, but also includes a depth of functionality for commercial pilots as well. The Open Sky app provides information about where it is okay to take off and fly and any advisories the pilot should be aware of in their planned flight area. Open Sky automatically checks airspace rules and provides a safety checklist for the user's drone flight. Open Sky is also an approved provider of near real time access to controlled airspace by both the FAA in the United States and CASA in Australia. But let's remember, Open Sky is just one of many solutions in the industry. One organization, app, tool, service, or company will not be able to support all drone operators. And the industry will be able to innovate to create tools that help serve different pilots with different needs and provide an option for them with what they use to plan their flights and overall understand the airspace around them. For example, a hobbyist flying in their backyard may not want or need all the features that support commercial drone flights. However, the industry service suppliers will share data in real time so that all drone operators have the information that they need to safely share the airspace. These industry services form a network to exchange this information. 
Another like really important takeaway about this approach here is that the cost and the effort in providing this information and functionality is shifted to the industry. And it's important for there to be many solutions that will serve different purposes depending on the user, the use case, the conditions, and more. Again, there is no one size fits all product that can fulfill the needs of old pilots. And that is why it is important that as we transition to this new era of aviation, that we have a set of standards and common language so that drone operators have a choice in selecting a drone flying safety solution that works best for them and their needs. We are so excited at WING to see industry and government come together all around the world to align on an open and harmonized approach to drone integration in the skies. It is going to be important to continue developing uncrewed traffic management tools and systems all around the world to facilitate scaling with the increased volume of air traffic and diversity of air traffic that we see today and expect to continue to see in the coming years. Access to the sky means access to this career space too. And unmanned traffic management opens up this exciting realm and makes aviation much more than the classic profiles of pilots, flight attendants, and ground operations. Our UTM team at Wing consists of engineers, product managers, program managers, solution managers, communication experts, and many, many more roles. I welcome people to learn more about what Wing is up to on our LinkedIn page, and also encourage anyone interested in this dynamic new space to check out our available roles and opportunities at wing.com slash careers. Thank you all for attending this session. I hope you learned something new and understand a bit more about the solutions and systems that are enabling more people to access the airspace in a safe and collaborative way. Again, thanks for attending and hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you so much, Tara. Um, I feel like it's such a hot topic right now, knowing this, we all order so many packages from so many online retailers. And then when they're delayed, like when we have a deadline, we're wondering, why can't they just fix these things, you know, or what's, or, or the other side of the coin, people have safety questions, right? What, what's the most common question you get, Tara, when you're like out and about, maybe at a, a social gathering, you explain what you do for a living. What, what is that most like, what's the most common misconception that you find you, you have to answer for people? Yeah, I think uh, one of the basic misconceptions is people thinking that this is still in a small private test phase. And we've done 200,000 deliveries from our nest, from other businesses to real homes and real customers in three different continents. And I think uh, until the service comes to, to your city or, or your area, it's hard to realize that, that this is happening. And this is really an exciting thing. And we're seeing a lot of positive feedback from our users and our customers on their experience. Uh, you know, kids are able to get gelato on a hot summer day during the pandemic, especially we were delivering things like toilet paper, which was a, a hot topic at a time, <laughs> um, delivering Girl Scout cookies or library books. So trying to see what the community is interested in and providing uh those services too. To those wow, library books too. I love that because now my brain's thinking of these like partnerships that you could have to use this for like a whole segment of some kind like that. Um, wow, Tara, now I'm curious to see if we want to find out more about this or like, hey, is my is my city going to come up next? You know, is there somewhere we can find that kind of information? Yeah, if you go to wing.com or wing.com slash UTM, you can learn a bit more about what our operations look like today, uh, where things are at and more about the UTM space in general. Uh, the website's really thorough. There's great animations and videos that people can watch as well. That sounds fantastic. Thanks so much for joining us today, Tara. Have a great rest of the event. Thank you.